And then, you know, it's important now for Banks to play well when he comes in as the backup point guy. And he did have an up-and-down first half, yeah. made some mistakes, made a couple of plays. Here is Hawkins going to the rim and drawing the foul. Hawkins was nice in the first half. He had 12. Dejan Bodoroga had 11 for Roma. Sean Marion led everybody with 14. And Hawkins not afraid to go in and mix it up with the big people. We've seen him step out, convert from deep, and now putting it on the deck and getting around the rim. And when... You talk about Amari Stoudemire, you really feel bad for him. He's the player. He is the guy dealing with these injuries. You also feel bad for Mike D'Antoni, who said, and I quote, we can't figure him in because we don't know. Right now, we've just got to figure out how to go forward in this situation, meaning we have to plan for life without Amari Stoudemire. And if he comes back, well, then that's gravy. Well, well there's no adjustment when he comes back. The style of play, he's been aware of it. He's been in it. He's a focal point in it. Of course, this guy's not bad either when he's in terms of focal point. Look at this. Everybody's got their heads turned. You get an open look, and uh, Marion thought that was down. As did I. That was very close. Off by a hair. And Phoenix still with a 10-point lead. No down screen. They've done a nice job making Phoenix work on the D. Nice steal. Second steal of the game for Steve Nash. And he lost it back. And then had it taken away from him, and he sheepishly says, yep, the foul was on me. That ball taken away by Vlado Ilyevsky. I think they got him for a kick ball at the end of this. Let's see what I thought I saw. Interesting. There have been some interesting calls in this game. A little herky-jerky move and out of bounds. They're very active hands off penetration, don't they, the Suns? Mm hmm. I think you've got an open row. If you don't protect it, get it on the opposite side, you are doomed. Ilyevsky over Nash. No, rebound to Marion, flying through. Always putting pressure on you, looking around. Great vision. Look at this handle. And Nash going for his, a rare individual take for Nash. He comes up empty. No look by Ilyevsky to Hawkins. Well, they played him pretty well, Nash, I thought, that trip. Hawkins floating and hitting, so he has the points for Lodomatic Roma here in the second half. Three of them. He now has 15 in the game, and Roma within eight. Ball screen. Diaw, a rare touch. They have not run many plays for him. Back to Nash, and he hits it. See how free they play, though, Rick. I mean, it's, you know, you, you try and diagram some of their stuff. They initiate an offense with a thought, and then they react to the defense beautifully. And that has to be very difficult, not only executing what you have drawn up, but there's a plan B and a plan C and a plan D, and for everybody to be on the same page as it shifts from plan B to C to D, that's pretty incredible. It's hard for the public to really appreciate how difficult that is, but they all know the counters. You know, the defense makes you do this. You've got to make some sort of an adjustment. Uh, you know, it's just from playing together. And obviously they scrimmage a lot as they go up and down and read you on where you are on the floor, where the overloads are. They're just terrific. Uh, and, and they analyze beautifully. Nice step out three. Wide open shot, knocked down, and automatic aroma within eight. And the answer right there from Boris Diaw. Boris Diaw led the French national team to the quarterfinals and ultimately a fifth place finish. Wow. And again from deep. Lodomatic Aroma coming out on fire here in the second half. They cut the lead to seven. Of course, Tony Parker not playing with France. And Boris Diaw was the leader of that team. Still really a blend in guy. Mm -hmm. You're right back in. Oh, that was big for them, I thought. Yes, it was. But look at this push. A lot of points, too. Uh, ooh, the distance, huh? Just a little too far. But when you're in this point atmosphere, it's very tough if you're not comfortable at it. You know, they're going to push you. They want to get over 110, 100, whatever they can get. They'll drag you along. Roma within seven. 
They've come out hot in this second half and a turnover right there. You think about the defense played by the Phoenix Suns. Last year, they gave up only, you know, 45% to their opponents. That's not that bad. And more on that in a second. I've got one more stat for you when we return. Hey, you're watching NBA Europe Live presented by EA Sports right here on your home for hoops, NBA TV. He's mixed his game up beautifully. Terrific upper body strength as well and range. And coming up tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern on NBA TV, Clippers versus Zeska Moscow from the Universal Sports Hall in Moscow, Russia. The defending EuroLeague champions, Zeska Moscow against the Los Angeles Clippers, went all the way to Game 7 of the second round of the NBA playoffs a year ago. That will be a good basketball game. And so is this. I don't know if I've ever seen Sean Marion miss that badly mm. when he's that wide open from his spot to corner. When he got back and guarded, though, that's uh, it's like an iron baseball. You got to keep playing, or if you don't hit, you got to feel. You can always help out. Roma very much in this game. Down just seven points, just over eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Nice pump. Luiso, the extra pass down to Gurry, had it taken away. Back comes Phoenix, but a foul to thwart the fast break. And that is one of the characteristics of international ball that you may not like, but it's a fact of the matter. They will foul you in fast break opportunities to avoid getting slammed on on the other end. Well, you've got to concentrate on getting back with this philosophy, and here's the coach imploring that he get back and balance the floor. Repesha gets after his players, and yeah. we've seen that several times in this game. Very successful coach. As you mentioned, he has a EuroLeague title on his resume. Big defensive trip here. And they get the turnover. Here's Hawkins. Back up to Hawkins, the alley-oop attempt, and that was ill-advised. Yeah. Pass by Elievsky. Not a great play. And Behind they... the back to Thomas. I thought that was going to be one of those in-your-face things right there from Nash. And while well, speaking of in-your-face, how about a three from Roger Bell to get the lead back to ten? Well, that's how they get you. You get an opportunity, you misplay a fast break, and they'll punish you for it. They got offense by Hawkins, I think. Foul gives it back to the Phoenix Suns with a 10-point lead. Two wasted trips now when you think of it. Exactly, and, and thus the yeah. chagrin on the face of Yasmin Repesha. And the Windsor tie. You probably don't know that little look, do you? Uh, I don't. What we, we, School me. I'm not a tie wearer, as What's you up? know, unless I'm doing some anchoring work for NBA TV. I'm of the laid-back variety. Well, occasionally you're Flip flops, a t-shirt. Oh, oh. That pass off the dribble, out of bounds. Well, it's funny. Uh, Nash can do it. I'm not so sure Mary can do that, you know, that little hook pass. Good idea, but not executing. Sometimes when you see Nash and that pass off the dribble in rhythm, it reminds you of John Stockton, doesn't it? Yeah, and that is another play. That's not a good play. Yeah, he does, very much so. Shot clock running down. Did Moiso beat the clock? They're saying no. Doesn't matter. He missed the shot. Anyway, it'll go back over to Phoenix. You're right, Bill. I mean, the game is right there for Lodomatica Rome. It's a very careless offensive possession. Well, you know, they're using their trips well, though. I mean, it, they're using clock and making Phoenix run. That inhibits them from getting out. So that that's but uh, on occasion, just mishandling, bad judgment. You know, just trying to force an issue. And why not come with some experience here with Bodor Olga? Hawkins will have a seat. Started the third quarter hot and has since cooled. You know, the difference, I think, between Stockton and Nash is Stockton loved the, uh, the pick and roll. And seldom, although Nash can use it, he does a lot of it as freewheeling. It's not a staple for Steve Nash like it was no. for Stockton. Stockton to Malone. Start of Daller. I mean, some combination. Oh, 
Under 10 on the shot clock, and that's been a familiar refrain, and the alley-oop to Sean Marion from Steve Nash, the first time in this game, the first of many this year. Freewheeling. Uh, just great use of the dribble. All of a sudden, the head's apprised of the situation. Just open it up for the high flyer. Marion and Nash give the Suns a 12-point lead. Kind of a dangerous time here for Lodomatic Aroma. Bodoroga restores order, brings them back within 10. Well, he doesn't need much space, does he? A little small change foul in the backcourt. Tanelli. No, they don't call it on him and create a turnover. Okay. A break for Roma. In the game earlier today, BC Kimke hung around with the Clippers. Ended up losing that game. It was a single digit affair. 98 91. Roma looking to do the same here or better. Moiso, does he get the end one this time? They score the goal. Pretty play as the commissioner looks on. It's amazing the growth of this sport worldwide, though. Extraordinary. Moiso with a nice little turnaround, too. They took away his left hand, came back. A little kiss delivery. And you see, you see David there basically beaming, and you understand why. I mean, this is really one of one of his true points of emphasis is the globalization of the game and courtside here enjoying this game from Rome, Italy. You know, in, in a way, this is his baby right here oh, to yeah. see to see uh, uh, this NBA Europe live tour presented by EA Sports and cool thing to be a part of, Bill. And down the road, I think we're going to see some interesting things in the world of basketball. Growth. I can envision years from now a world championship, the winner of Euro and the winner here. Well, I would love to see that. And Barbosa set that up with great penetration. James Jones knocks it down. Seska Moscow, who we'll see tomorrow against the Clippers from Moscow, uh, the reigning EuroLeague champion. You know, I don't know if they would beat the Miami Heat, but they'd give them a good game. That mm -hmm. I can tell you. I'm looking forward to it. First opportunity. Look at this. Turning heads with penetration. Oh, Barbosa kills him with a three from the left wing. You're in it, and then all of a sudden, explosion. You get it in single digits, a couple of turnovers, a three later. You look up, you're down 12. We're under five minutes to go in the third quarter. Pretty good defense there. See that front? That's just terrific. Too early, though, with the pass, yeah. though, right? Yeah, he had walked his man up. It was really, actually, offensively, it was a nice play by the postman. Look at this. Turn the corner. The extra pass. Spot up. Convert. Barbosa on the money. When you've got a 40-plus or hitting that three, and they're that wide open, and Roger Bell, they're not for three, then a two. But Phoenix surging here midway through the third quarter. They've extended the lead to 14. Yeah, fatigue a factor, too. I mean, you just, ooh, a little discard. Look at Nash causing a problem by helping. Raja knocked it away from Bodoroga. Got it to the middle to Nash, but that ball kicked by Ilyevsky. He had the right idea, too. He had a wingman and a pretty good defensive maneuver. I'll bet everybody on Roma is a pretty good soccer player besides. Speaking of soccer, Steve Nash plays on two soccer teams in the offseason to help him stay in shape. And the word on the street is he's in... You know, it's a cliche to say they're in the best shape of their career. I mean, Steve Nash was probably in a little bit better shape in his 20s, but he is in phenomenal shape by all reports heading into the season, trying to defend his back-to-back -back MVP awards. I'll bet he's in better shape than he was when he was in his 20s. He might be, actually, because at this age, you've got to work that much harder to stay on top of it, right? The Olympics in Australia, uh, that year is when he turned on the speed. Like he gained speed, which is very hard late in life. I mean, How do you gain I think, speed? I think he lost a little weight, and for some reason, whatever exercises he did, you know, the quickness, the agility, all of a sudden he came back from that Olympic, and he was a tiger. That's Dallas. You think back early in his career with Phoenix, he was a bench guy, just trying to become a rotation right. player. Then worked his way into the rotation. Then went to Dallas, had those great years, and just it's it's almost like this direct ascent almost like a plane taking off and no looking back and there's no looking back and and let me tell you something i mean 
if Shaq's maybe on a little bit of a slow slide down at this point of his career, Steve Nash is still on the ascent despite being in his 30s. No, I would agree. And then his understanding of the game, too. Now, Mike can speak. Now, he can see. He can really communicate. Something over the shot clock, I think, or the timer. Yeah, there, there's there's none of this, uh, you know, no me, no speak, no... I mean, he can go with the, no with the native that. language here. Right, exactly. They're looking for some timing issue, I believe. But getting back to Nash, uh, his knowledge of the game helps his speed. He knows when to turn on the spurts because... It, he gets rid of it at the right time. He reads or anticipates his teammates, so then he'll drag his guy. Just, he's just a pleasure to watch, no question. He's got a huge basketball brain inside of that head. And you think of the assist-to-turnover ratio, 10.5 assists per game last year, 3.5 turnovers, which is a little bit high. That actually ranks among the league leaders. But when you have the ball as much as he does, and when you're... 10-5 on the dimes to 3-5 on the turnovers. That's still a heck of a ratio. Well, an, an old uh, friend and former coach at St. Louis, Richie Regan, made the all-star team in the NBA two years. And he used to say to me, a guard is going to make mistakes. Don't take it away from him. And, and I think the term, people really say, well, 3.5. You know what? Just what you said. He's got it all the time. He's making all the right decisions. There's going to be defensive reactions that cause it, and a mistake on occasion. On occasion, it, like it, it, there's quarterbacks in the NFL that you know throw 10, 12 interceptions. That's not a bad total. No. You have the ball. You're throwing it downfield. You're going to make a few mistakes, and that's a nice move right there by Lucas Mavro Capalatis. Lucas, Lucas, nice back cut. How about that? No look by Banks, but no delivery by Barbosa. Well, they're pushing the pace. They got the walk. Motorola does not like the call, and they cannot carve into the 13-point lead. Now, this is a good time for Banks to establish some sound play. Just make the easy play, right? Exactly. Well, it's really almost like lunchtime play. Open the middle. See what you can do off the bounce. Make the extra pass on the kick out. A near steal for Marcus Banks. See, he'll give you that, though, I think. He, he, he's a gamer defensively. Probably the strength of his game at this point is his ability to dog the opposing point guard, turn him over. And here's a look at Sean Marks. Late of the San Antonio Spurs, signed by Phoenix in the offseason. New Zealand, if I'm not mistaken. He's a New Zealander. Yeah. And this is a cow. Jacopa Giacchetti at the line. Giacchetti. You're right, D'Antoni did have the name to go over to Italy, didn't he? Oh, he's got the He's got the apostrophe in the middle of his last name. It's beautiful. Right. Very humble, unassuming guy. Nice cross. And they got a foul on Tonelli underneath. Boy, Barbosa can turn an ankle, can he? And he's got, as you noted earlier, that foot speed. Boy, this is a happening in Europe, isn't it? And the people turn out, they're responding. They know the names of these kids, too. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not like uh, an unnamed opponent. They're very aware of the NBA. And I know David Stern would like to see this. I would like to see this as an international broadcaster for NBA TV. I'd like to see Americans get to know these international guys a little better. The Theodorus Papalukas from Seska Moscow, Dejan Bodoroga, players of this. Little, they're getting better at it. They're getting better. Yeah, because of the international play and the exposure. Tune into the World Championship next summer. Uh, the Eurobasket Tournament over here, the Tournament of the Americas. Still to be determined where that's going to be played. And then obviously in 2008, the Olympics in Beijing. If you want to get to know international basketball, those are great places to start. As is Mr. Raftery, the Euroleague Game of the Week coming up every week during the season on NBA TV. So you can get your fill if you're interested. Big Maven Jones on the low post defending. Mavro Kefalitis at the free throw line. 
Off Mar with the first. Marrow Capolitis. Not bad. Not for me. Not bad. Not bad. We're working on that. And NBA.com is your place for all access. The Europe Live Tour. Everything you want to know about the Europe Live Tour, go to NBA.com. You can find out why, how, where, and when. And don't forget, the Fantasy Frenzy is coming up October 16th. Why do you get excited on that read? You were part of that? I might be. I might have a little something to do with the fantasy friends. Look at this challenge. I mean, they, they don't get back and settle in defensively against the Suns. Boy, they could have used that shot right there down Look 12. Look at this, pretty. The hit ahead. Barbosa beats everybody down the court. They're relentless. It's a marathon with them. You might sprint early. But they're going to catch you come fourth, late third, fourth. It's like a running team in football, right? You know, maybe Passing. three yards, three yards, three yards. We're going to bust an 80-yarder on you. At some point, I think the uh, the flesh gives in. Well, Roma needs a stop at this point. 2.20 to go in the third. And now they are down 17 off the three by James Jones. And here comes Jones with a stretch here with such a far run to cover them, too. Roma on the ropes, late third, a foul by the Suns. Dejan Bodoroki, you can see him, he is gassed yeah. out here. They not, used, it. not used to running and gunning with the Suns. The Suns are looking good, they're up 17. You're watching NBA Europe Live. Presented That's for sure, Steve, and great to have you with us here in Rome tonight. Free throws coming up here for Rome, and it'll be uh, Dano Bodoroga at the free throw line and his first one is up and good we have just over two minutes two minutes six seconds remaining here in the third quarter now 78 63 the Suns leading in the ball game they had 11 point lead at halftime 54 43 and a perfect first half from the free throw line 16 of 16 Motoroga gets the bounce and he knocks down both free throws Suns down with Marcus Banks James Jones Leandro Barbosa and uh, Sean Marks is in there. And also, for the first time, Jermaine Jones, a newcomer, but a veteran in the NBA. Banks with the ball out front down. Banks pulls back. Three-pointer on the way. Won't go. Rebound is yanked down underneath by Hawkins. And then a foul going to be called inside. And the foul is going to be on Sean Marks. Marks will pick up the foul. And uh, that means that we're going to have some free throws here. And it'll be David Hawkins going to the line. Hawkins will shoot a couple at the free throw line. We mentioned earlier he's been in some NBA camps. Came off the campus of Temple University. And I'm sure he still has his eye on the NBA. Well, his body, I mean, he's built, uh, no question about it. Obviously, uh, like Steve talked about earlier, come over here, get an opportunity to play a lot of minutes. Kind of hone in on your game a little bit. He's got good size there. She has nice rotation on his balls. I'd like to see him work on his off the dribble a little bit in the lane with that, with that great body. But he'll be able to get to the basket. He gets the free throw. 78-65. Sons down the drive as Barbosa wheels the pass that's picked off on the side by Ilyevsky. Ilyevsky. And he'll bring it down the right side. Quick pass goes to Hawkins. Back to Ilyevsky. He's top of the key area to Regetti at three-point range. Out to Ilyevsky. Ilyevsky knocked down. Back-to-back -back three early in the quarter. He misses the drive to the hoop this time. Rebound picked up by Jermaine Jones. 6'8", 230 pounder, he's 8th year in the league. Down to Marks, low, and he gets the stuff, and he's fouled. Sean Marks, well, at least he knows what to do with the basketball when he gets it underneath. He got the jam, and he's fouled by Rigetti. Well, B does a good job pushing that basketball and finds Sean Marks wide open, everybody running. It's pretty athletic, you know. You think of him as a jump shooter, but he could really run the floor. And he ran the, right to the front of the rim that time. And that's the place to be. He got the ball, dropped it through, drew the foul on Rigetti of Rome, and now Sean Marks sets up at the free throw line. And his free throw is on the way and good. So he makes a three-pointer here for the Suns in the closing minute of this uh, third quarter in Rome, Italy. And up out of backcourt is Ilefsky. Ilefsky off to Hawkins. Hawkins top of the key. Well, that was an enjoyable listen to the venerable Al McCoy. And, and how smooth is he on play-by-play? -play? Well, a lot more words from a radio guy than a TV guy, right? Yeah, you'd rather be doing that, I think, wouldn't you? Radio, uh, I did a lot of radio play-by-play -play in college. It is extremely fun. But, Raph, I'd rather be doing TV with you, oh, my man. thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, by the way, both of his uh, sidekicks are a little better shooter than your sidekick. <laughs> and uh, Vinny, unbelievable range, terrific pro career. And of course, uh, Stevie Kerr, uh, 
just unbelievable career at Arizona and then alongside, what was the kid's name from Chicago? Not a bad player. Got a couple of rings there with him. Jordan, uh, was it Jordan? Steve Kerr? Yeah, it was, was it Mike Jordan? Or Mike, Michael, I think that's who it was. <laughs> Michael. But, he did uh, okay. He did, sure did. Then San Antonio, he got a couple more. So Remember the headlines coming out of UNC, will he make it in Chicago? Speaking you know, of Michael Jordan, he did okay, right? Oh, boy. Then, how about how good he became? I remember when he first came in, and he was good. And he just kept getting better and better. Just an incredible performer. Who, who had more of an insatiable appetite for winning, Bill Russell or Michael Jordan? Or is oh, it a tie? Boy, boy, that's a B. That's, I don't know. I would want to take sides on that. Shot clock running down, and it's just a turnover for Lamatica Roma. No three-point play, but the foul is drawn on Marcus Banks. There was a stat I was going to give you before break uh, a couple of moments ago. The Phoenix Suns get really dissed for not playing defense, but Mike D'Antoni is quick to remind you that in terms of points per possession against, they were fourth in the NBA last year. Well, you know, I, I get back to what I said to you earlier. Forget the stats for one moment. In order to run, you've got to guard. You've got to rebound. You've got to check out. Inside out, you've got to stop penetration. You can't give up EV shots. Their philosophy assures them of giving up points because they're going to drag you along. They're going to outscore you. But they understand position and all of those things. It's just the numbers are mind-boggling that they force you to score. Highest scoring team in the NBA in the last two years. And this reminder that coming up tomorrow, we have the Clippers in Seska Moscow from the Universal Sports Hall in Moscow, Russia. Saturday, 8 a.m. Eastern on NBA TV. And how about the Suns? They just keep pouring it on. Jermaine Jones, his first basket in purple with five seconds left in the third. And that shot is good as well. Lano Ilyevsky sends Lodomatic Aroma into the third, into fourth quarter huddle. Well, 13-point lead. And a good degree besides at Cal. Nice cut, nice look. Bonaroga, heady play. Bonaroga brings Roma with an 11. Knocked out of bounds, but Phoenix... At the beginning of a long run when you're on the Suns team, when you think of it, no, you're, you're thinking June. You're thinking June. You're right. not. You're not thinking, you know, tax day. No. Which is no. the end of the season for a lot of teams. But you're right. The Spurs, the Suns, the Mavs, they're all thinking June. And David Hawkins is thinking about dunking it down. And he brings his team within 11. They keep coming. Actually, within nine with that shot. So. Lodomatic Aroma, very much alive in this basketball game. Hawkins can get up, can't he? can. He? Remember the one early in the game where he got stuck under the rim? And, and you thought, well, maybe, but he's got some hops, too. He got caught underneath a little bit. No zone on the out of bounds. Dangerous with the outside shooting ability. What a nice pass. Oh, uh, Diaw the no look. Marion can't cash in. And the rebound of Mavro Kefalatis. Side pick and slide. All the way to the cup. And the deuce is good. Roma within seven. Ilyevsky made up for the mistake a moment ago with a kind deuce. And he goes with the right hand, the lefty, too. Here's Banks to the rim. Missing. Maybe not the take D'Antoni would have wanted. It's stolen back by Boris Diaw behind his back to Banks, and they'll set up. Do you think that take by Banks uh, previously was out of the flow? No, I liked it. His move to the goal? Yeah. I just think the defense responded pretty okay. good. Didn't you? Because they had uh, passed it around the perimeter, and he had a good opportunity. And another good opportunity for three from the right wing. Came up empty. This game's good. Good, Pete. Get good, people. I know you're not going anywhere. This is NBA Europe Live presented by EA Sports on NBA TV.
Years ago, they lost to the San Antonio Spurs. They eventually won the championship. Last year, they lost to the Dallas Mavericks. They maybe should have won the championship, won the first two games. And Miami on the ropes, they lost the last four. And Miami, your reigning NBA champions. And James Jones from the corner. A nice handle there of the 2-3 zone. Good perimeter ball movement. I really enjoyed the response by the crowd to Steve Nash, the appreciation they have for his level of play when he was out of the game earlier. Well, Italians have a flair for their food, for their drink, for the, just the, the way they handle themselves, you know, maybe a little loud in the way they talk. And Steve Nash has that sort of flamboyance to his game, yeah. so you can understand why they would like him. Yeah, he's got a little star. He's got a little magic. <laughs> Nash comes in from out of bounds, got it, and then lost it. Here's an opportunity for Roma. Down 10. Oops. And drawing the foul, Ilyevsky. Ilyevsky's been, been a nice little player for this team. Been all over the court, hitting threes, driving to the hole. It's tough kid, Slovenia's second year with uh, Roma. We noted earlier he's a lefty. We saw him go right as well. And really pretty much a giveaway. If you're going to foul, don't let him put it up on the glass. Very good point, Raph, and you know, we, we saw David Stern a few moments ago, and he received recently an informal proposal from the Real Madrid Sports Club that could lead to five NBA expansion franchises one day playing in Europe, and David's response to that was, hey, I'm happy to talk about it. He also said he has long dreamt of expansion to Europe, but he did mention that it's realistic only if the teams have an NBA quality arena, mm -hmm. meaning 15 to 20,000 people, luxury suites and all that, and they need to have the cash necessary to pay the expansion fee that's going to be asked by the 30 owners currently in the NBA. But the fact that he's open to it is, is I think, it's I think news. And, uh, well, Rome has the building, when you think of it. Uh, this is built in the 60s. In the last five years ago, they redid it. It's very attractive visually here as we look at it. Um, uh, we're going to see it down the road. I don't know when. It, it seems sort of like it seems like we're heading that direction, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Well, I, I think people are understanding that this is a pretty high level of basketball mm -hmm. worldwide. So it, it's not like just doing this for the money or for you know enlarging uh, the enlarging the NBA. So you know it does make some sense because teams are getting better, competitive. They're starting at younger levels. We've all talked and marveled how fundamentally sound the players are at a young age. And now I think we had over 60 international players in the NBA last year. And I'm sure that'll be furthered when the count comes in uh, the 1st of November. It grows every year. I mean, you, you watch the NBA draft now. Uh, you, you need a translator part of the time. You need Fran Fischilla from ESPN who tracks it. On a, on a very uh, uh, heavy level for ESPN, and he does a fantastic job with that international coverage. Here is Raja Bell to the cup, drawing the foul. That open middle, they really know how to attack. And there's no big encumbrance there. They just read it, put it on the deck, and if you close, look at the perimeter, lined up for jump shots. They got the kick to the corner. Location, not only in real estate, Bell off with the first. A rare miss from the free throw line for him. One out of two for Raja Bell. Once again, they start to extend it. Got the seven, I think you said earlier. Yep, they got it down to seven. A three by James Jones got it to 10. Now it's back to 10, 91, 81. 6.40 to go in the game. And that three is good. Looking good, Alessandro Tanole. And we're back to seven. Use the whole floor. James Jones, can he do it again? No, so now an opening for Roma. Boy, the trust Nash has. He tells you to shoot it by that pen. Nice penetration. How about yeah. that? Rigetti with the left hand floating. And we got a five-point game, Ralph. They're right there. Crowd gets into it a little bit. See, all the perimeter passing now because of the zone. How about that chest pass? Oh, oh. my goodness. And Sean Marion to slither and wiggle his way to the hoop. What an adjustment.
Uh, Mike with a little smile there. That was just good. Look at the extra effort on that pass. That is magnificent. And then, as you know, the, the little kiss with the theatrics, too, with the slide by. Oh, what great control. How about the spin, too? Sean Marion, you're good. He just gets it. I mean, it's it's unorthodox. You don't know where it's coming from, but it, it, at the end of the play, the ball goes through the hoop. And they just play, too. You notice that there's no nonsense. It's all business. Get it done. There's no taunting, no fist pumping. Uh, they, they run back the other way. They're a classy organization. They sure are, top to bottom. Three-point play for Sean Marion. There's your quirky release. You ever seen anybody with a similar release to that? That's a one of a kind yeah. right there, isn't uh, it? It's, it's almost like getting rid of it. What like, a, like a hot potato, right? Yeah. Bodoroga, all kinds of fakes, fading and missing over Diaw. Rebound to Barbosa. Back comes Phoenix, up nine. Pull the string a little bit on that one. Ilyevsky can hit that. They do drag you out with their perimeter play. Nice front. Go the other way. Yeah, over the top. They get over the back on Tonelli right there. He hates the call. Ilyevsky lobbying to no avail. Lift this card, Bell in good spot. You talk about defense again. They get between the man and the, and the rim. I mean, that's just solid basketball. We have another timeout. Yasmin Burpesha wants to talk it over. Suns 94, Pala Lodomatica. Side of this game between the Suns and Lodomatica Roma as NBA Europe Live continues on NBA TV. It's presented by EA Sports. And remember, it's game time. Or it's about to be game time. NBA's opening night is October 31st, Halloween on TNT. And opening week brings you the passion, excitement, and teamwork of the NBA. It's all back for another fantastic season. And we resume action with Raja Bell at the free throw line. Boy, he was in the center. He was in the eye of the storm in the playoffs last year, wasn't he? He had the clothesline on Kobe. He had the shot over Ewing. Yes, he did. He was in the middle of everything last year for the Phoenix Suns. And... They hope they're, he's in the middle of it again. They not, really do. Not in all circumstances. Exactly. He is a fiery, emotional player, and obviously his emotions got the better of him on that play with Kobe. But Raja Bell, a stand-up guy and a heck of a three-point shooter. And Roma with a crucial miss right there. The Suns up 11 with the Rock. Under five minutes to go. They need a stop, and they're not going to get it. Barbosa wheels and deals. 13-point lead. That was classic Nash, though. He just froze people, fed it to the empty side. Oh. Just a helpless feeling a lot of the time yeah, playing against him, isn't it? And there's carte blanche to the rim. Roma needs a hoop, and they need it now. That finger roll will not go. The rebound tapped to Mary, and back come the Suns. Raja. Rebound to Roma. They got that stop, so now with 4-10 to go, they go to work. They're fearless, though. I mean, they're not afraid to jack it up. That's part of the deal. You're open, drill it. Under 10 of the shot clock. Good help defensively. Did you see that down there? Mm -hmm. Great read. Not the best pass I've ever seen. No, no. Barbosa in the right spot. Tough to deny him the ball. He's so quick with his steps. Good cut. This team is so unselfish. Marion maybe a little too unselfish had, right there. I'm sure he was right at the rim if he wanted it. It's a good look at the Pala Lodomatica. A packed building as well, huh? They're enjoying themselves here during the timeouts. Playing the music, people getting into it. It's a good atmosphere here in Rome. Surprised oh, look at Barbosa, second block of the game. Great defensively. I'm surprised they haven't come back with Hawkins, by the way. 
Agreed. You wonder if, if there's maybe a doghouse situation going on here. The skip to Bell from the corner. In and out with the three. Uh, they'll still keep looking. They're tantalizing in a way. You know, Botoroga is not in there as well. They're two best players on the bench here in winning time. You know, it could be fatigue. To be honest with you. Could be fatigue. It could be Rakesha working some younger guys in, some other guys in to help them during the uh, the the, uh, the Italian league season. Yeah, it could be. The Suns hit the 100-point mark. They're now at 15, two and a half to go in the game. And another turnover by Roma. And a good defensive trip there. Nash faded out, played the passing lane. And Yasmin Rapesha calls another timeout. His team is reeling here Saturday morning on NBA TV. We resume play with the Suns up 15, two and a half to go in the game. I can see what Banks in. They're trying to give him some time. Let him run the show. A little set play there. Barbosa. No, it's tapped out. You see the international yeah. rule in play right there. Once it hits the rim, you can take it off the rim. You cannot take it off the backboard, however, before it hits the rim. Garee turns it over. Squeeze in. Relentless, huh? Roger Bell really upset with himself missing that layup. Well, if you're gonna, you might as well miss layups here in the preseason. Don't let it happen in the regular season. Rebound to Barbosa, and they're running. Barbosa, the cutback. Pretty good defensive maneuver there. He may have been moving, but uh, you can see that speed. Tough to contain this guy in the open floor when you're backpedaling. Oh. I like these uniforms, Bill. I like the the Italian colors mixed in with Phoenix's colors. Uh -huh. It's a good look. They're doing that. Uh, the Philadelphia 76ers had FC Barcelona's colors on their shoulders in that game. And the Spurs had the French colors, red, white, and blue, up, up and down their sides in their Spurs uniforms. Nice touch. Huh? Nice touch. They really run their stuff. I mean, they, they forced Phoenix to guard. A little, a little extra step by Moyoso. He's had some moments in this game yeah. that, that were good and not so good, but right there, feeling good about himself. Moiso did not play pro basketball last year. He's on the comeback trail with Lodomatic Aroma. Well, they've come up empty the last few minutes, haven't they? Yes, they have. A lot of open shots that haven't been converted. There's a three from Lodomatic Aroma. Well, that's international, isn't it? And a big step out. Boy, you give them an opportunity. They need time to knock those down. Just a two on that, not a three. Barbosa. Ooh, I thought that was going to go George Gervin style. Back comes Roma. Moiso. Nice feed to Gareed. He slams it down. So Roma now within nine. Under 30 seconds to go in the game. Now Phoenix hasn't changed their philosophy much, have they? Not at all. Same old Suns in triple digits. Turnover underneath. And the foul on Raja Bell. And we should bring this to your attention with 15 seconds left. It's free cannolis for everyone, and it has been for a few moments. The Suns at 100 points. How do you like that? Well, maybe we'll get a shipment sent over. Got to watch the waistline. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching carbs, you don't want a cannoli, right? No, no, not good for the old ticker. Still coaching there on the sideline, though. Great experience for this team as well. Compete against this high-level, high-octane offense. New meaning to getting back and help. I think when you play the Suns, it's more of uh, here he comes. We're under 10 seconds to go. 
Odoroga into the corner, and that shot is good by Vlado Ilyevsky with 2.9 to go. And the clock runs out. The Phoenix Suns prevail 193 over Lodomatica Roma, who built, played a pretty darn good game here. Very solid.